Greetings Wastelanders, Cregan here with another Fallout 76 video. No, I'm not turning into a ghoul, Summer has decided to hit the Commonwealth a tad early this year, so I've decided to ditch the beanie and spare you all the sight of my receding hairline just by embracing the bald look. So, yeah. You awkward segue! Today, we're going to look at Gauss Rifles, a charging single-shot weapon that doesn't seem to get a lot of love these days, and for a few reasons. Single-shot weapons need to be able to deliver brutal one-shot capable DPS in order to keep up with their commando cousins. Even in post, that doesn't sound right. A fixer or handmaid's ability to fire, say, four rounds in the time it takes a rifle to fire one, means the rifle needs to deliver four times as much damage per second in order to keep up the same DPS, and in this sense I am using the term deliberately, damage per second. But the Gauss Rifle has a charging mechanic that allows the user to build up a charge to maximum before releasing, except that the max charge is the expected damage for its weapon class, so you really have a rifle that is capable of nerfing itself. So what was the draw in the past for using this weapon, and does rolling one as a god roll make up for its shortcomings? Stick around, and we'll find out. But first, if you found this video helpful or at least entertaining, don't forget to like and leave a comment, and to stay on top of new content and live streams, be sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications. So let's start by stating a few things. First, this is an energy weapon. If you want a true god roll, you'll need to buy a legacy weapon from another player. Explosive no longer rolls on these weapons, so we're just going to ignore that entirely. Second, I still get a lot of comments on how I'm able to afford so many rerolls, or for those of you who catch the crafting price, how I'm able to hack or mod the game to make it free. Well, easy. It's built right into the game. For those of you who have a Fallout First subscription, you can play on a private world with all of these options available to play with. The caveat is, once you've copied a character into this world, you can't copy them back out. Think of this as a sandbox mode or a public test server that doesn't have the bleeding edge updates. If there's enough interest, I might do a Fallout Worlds video in the future just covering the different options. Alright, so I've already gone ahead and crafted four of these guys, modded them all to be the same. These are the mods that we're going to test with today. All I need to do is just hop in and re-roll them. So let's get going. Now I've already gone ahead and uh, set this up on my stream deck. So all I need to do is press one button on here. It's going to re-roll three stars and advance the counter. And as I see something desirable uh, pop in, I will update it on the left side here. So let's uh, let's start with the first one. Yeah, and as we can tell, that's not going to go so well. So let's just skip forward until we get to, to the good part. And with roll 91, here we go. We've got something that's halfway decent, but that second star just isn't quite there. Uh, we got anti-armor with a 15% faster reload. That would have been cool, but I would have preferred to see fast fire rate in that instead of uh, replenishing the action points. So we're going to keep rolling this one. Ooh, we got pretty close with this. Um... I still would prefer the 15% um, faster reload, but this is actually not bad at all. Um, since we're only at 149, and I'm probably going to regret this later, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to I'm going to reroll this, but that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty close. And again, we get teased a bit. We've got uh, two out of three, that third star, plus 50 damage resist while aiming. Uh, nah, I'd, I'd rather the um, the faster reload, especially with a gun like this. You're going to be reloading quite a bit. So, nope. Oh, so close. Uh, we've got bloodied with 15% faster reload, but we've got AP refresh instead of fast fire rate. And I kind of think the fast fire rate might be better, better suited for that. 
so I'm going to keep rolling this, but that is pretty close. Now, 329, too. It's, it's really dragging on. We still haven't seen our first legitimate god roll yet. And because this is the second time I've seen this exact roll, I'm going to keep it this time. So we're going to mark off um, the anti-armor fast fire rate, uh, but instead of the faster reload, we're going to go with plus one agility. So I'm going to back out of this, and if I wind up rolling the exact perfect one again, or instead, I'll uh, re-roll this guy. But in the meantime... We're going to go back. And we're going to keep rolling the next one. And again, because of the way that this particular video is going, I'm going to probably keep this one as well. This has got two out of three, and that third star is actually not bad at all. It just doesn't lend itself to um, increasing critical hits, but it doesn't change that direct impact on that crit. So I'm going to keep this. I'm going to mark this as anti-armor crit hits do 50% damage. And uh, we've got 90% reduced weight instead of 15% uh, faster uh, critical meter fill. So, again, we'll back out of this. We're looking for bloodied now or exact god roll anti-armors. I just had it. I just had the crit three, all three stars, and I didn't process it fast enough. Ah, hate that. That was at roll 436. 436. Ah, let's keep going. Here we go. Our first legitimate god roll that I didn't destroy. We got a bloodied, that's crit. 15% faster reload. Oh, it's kind of flipped. It's kind of flipped. Um, but you know what? I'm going to mark this off anyway. Because uh, 15% faster reload is pretty good. And this is the crit version. So if I do get that exactly again i'll re-roll this but otherwise again we're at 525 rolls here and i don't think i'm going to get any more three star exact not not today and i keep walking away from the and here we've got bloodied with 15% faster reload, but with bashing, which is just absolutely the worst. You're so close with this. It's a VAT's hit chance instead of VAT's crit. So, uh, no. Nine hundred and seventy-five, and we actually got the legit god roll. Finally, I was about to give up at about a thousand. Bloodied, twenty-five percent faster fire rate, fifteen percent faster reload. Let's get that up on the board. Wow, nine hundred and seventy-five. So, let's put these to the test. And uh, see how they do over at West Tech. All right, so first up, we're going to try the anti-armor fast fire rate. We'll put that up. 
and let's see how it does. I'm hoping that the fast fire rate will impact uh, the charging time. I've not really played with this before, so we'll see. Headshot. Headshot. Need a right arm. Ooh. I am thoroughly impressed by this. That was a miss. Ah, reload. Miss. What? That's better. Well, that was a level 100, too. All right. Thoroughly impressed. Uh, let's head inside and switch to the anti-armor crit. Uh, oh, not that one. That one. And let's see how this does. Um, presumably, if fast fire rate is going to have any impact on charging, um, this should charge a little bit slower, but I'll get a lot more damage on my crits. Which I now have a full crit bar, so that is cool. Except I wasted that crit and couldn't get a hit on it. go. Got a crit lined up. 1795. Ah. Really? Got the doggo here. I think we can find a level 100 here. Test a crit on him. Like that guy. 1795, one shot from way back here on a level 100 super meter. Usually, seventeen ninety five. Very cool. All right, let's compare that to the bloodied faster fire rate. Take that off. Put that up now as a reminder. Uh, I am not noticing too much of a difference in the charge speed, so I don't think that fast fire rate impacts that at all. Good to know, but that's a little disappointing. Stop hiding. You pay for that. Yeah, where are you? There you are. That was a legendary. Level 75, I think. I'll have to go back and review the footage. That was outside bats. Hang on. Hang on. Ooh. Typically, this character needs bats in order to get some big hits, but maybe not. I mean, this is bloodied after all, and I am definitely in uh, bloodied range. Try one more guy down here. Yeah, 
Yeah. It's fine outside of that. Hmm. That is cool. All right, let's switch over to our last one for today. We're going to do the bloodied 50% uh, uh, more crit damage. Come on. There we go. And we'll put that up on the board because I keep forgetting to do that. And come on, right in the way. Not you. You. We're at 2031. On a level, I believe that was 100. this in adventure mode now. Oh, come on. Come on. You could do it. You could do it. There we go. Better than my treat? Because I doubt it. Well, since this went so swimmingly, let's try Super Mutant uh, Behemoth over at uh, the pylon. Ooh, was not a one shot. but not too close that he's going to clobber me. Crit. Ooh, half health. Three shots to take him down. Miss. Miss. Ta-da! Very cool. Uh, that is a powerful, powerful gun. I, I definitely like it. Well, that was unexpectedly fun. Like I said, I may just roll one of these in adventure mode just for the XP farming, except that's a lot of materials. In the end, had I not been crafting these in Fallout Worlds, crafting and rolling 975 Gauss rifles would have cost 7,800 silver, 9,750 circuitry, 13,650 aluminum springs and wood, 17,550 screws, 19,500 steel, 4,875 legendary cores, and 3,900 legendary modules, which would have cost 195,000 script, which at 150 50 script a day, not counting quest rewards and double script events, would have taken at least 1,300 days. If you traded in the bad rolls, it still would have cost 156,160 script and taken at least 1,042 days, 259 of which would have been spent trading back the rolls. Well, folks, that does it for this week's video. If you were watching this as a premiere, I will be live on twitch.tv slash Gaming tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is less than an hour from now, with the second episode 
episode of Mass Effect Legendary Edition, currently playing and getting seriously, seriously lost in Mass Effect 1. You can also catch me on Sundays at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, currently playing The Witcher 3. I'm Cregan, and I'll see you all in the next one.